Have you ever sat back and thought about what you can do to earn more revenue and to earn more profits for your sign shop? I bet you you didn't really think of service. Well, service is an amazing opportunity for you to try and add more revenue into your sign shop. So why don't you do this? Why don't you grab a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and let's talk a little bit about how you can add service into your sign shop. Let's go. Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm Peter Karunas with Shopbox and we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite topics to talk about. That's it, this is my top two, maybe top three favorite topics to talk about and that's service. That's sign service and how you can add this so that you can bring in more revenue per working hour, per day, per week, per month for your sign shop. So one of the first things that you need to know about service is that it's a lot like a working printer. That's right. Like this guy right here, a printer, pretty much is a license to print money while it's running. Your truck, your bucket truck, your service vehicle operates a lot like the same way. When it's out on the road, it's bringing in money. That's the idea behind service. Get that truck and that technician out on the road for as many hours as you can per day. Because if it's just sitting there, it's not making you any money. If it's parked on the side of your building, if you're bucket truck or service vehicle is parked on the side of your building, it's not making you any money until you have an installation. Yes, bucket trucks, you can make a lot of money doing installation, but in this video, we're really gonna just talk about service. There is an entire market for servicing signs. That's right, just repairing and restoring signs back to their working condition. There's an entire market for that. And you can be very profitable by adding service to your business. But before you do, you have to have a couple of principles dialed in to a point where you can actually implement service into your sign and print operation. So the very first thing that you have to do is you're gonna to have to establish an hourly rate plan. So in order to establish an hourly rate plan, there's a few things that you're gonna to have to take into account. Employee labor. How much are you paying that employee per hour plus their burden rate? And that's something that you need to figure out here as far as part one of your calculation. The next thing that you need to figure out is what's the actual payment on the vehicle? You know, if you're leasing or you're financing your service truck, uh, what is that rate broken down per day and then also per hour? The second thing that you have to think about is the actual payment on the vehicle. So if you're financing or you're leasing your trucks, you're gonna to have to take that lease payment and break that down per operating hour. And you can certainly do that, but that's the key metric. You wanna break your payment down to the hourly rate. Thirdly, the same thing can be said about your insurance. You pay insurance on the vehicle, you're going to need to break down your insurance premium down by the working hour. You certainly need to take into account gas or diesel and how much it's gonna to take to fuel the truck on a given week or a given day. Maintenance is going to be a big one too. You definitely wanna factor in about a yearly cost of what it's gonna to take to maintain that truck. Oil changes, tires, brakes, transmission, service on the bucket truck itself, the hydraulics of it all. You're gonna to wanna to take into an account a total amount that you're gonna spend per year and break that down as well to the operating hour. And lastly, you, what you wanna do is you wanna break down your overhead. Get your total monthly overhead uh, calculated and you can use the Shopbox calculator. That's a helpful tip there. You can use the, hop, the Shopbox calculator to break down what your overhead is per hour. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take all of those rates, you're gonna put them together, you're gonna to add them up and that right there is what your hourly rate cost is going to be. Now, you might wanna add in a little bit of a profit there. Uh, certainly, you wanna make some profit on the labor, so you're gonna to wanna to factor in somewhere between 20 to 30% of, of profit inside your hourly rate. Helpful tip here, when you're talking about hourly rates, you're probably gonna to wanna to research your competition. You don't wanna be the cheapest here, but you also don't wanna be the most expensive. So typically, you're gonna see hourly rates somewhere around the realm of 100 to $200 per working hour. Now, don't forget, that is the rate for one person in the bucket truck. If you need a second person help or a helper or another technician, there are other rates for that as well. And you're gonna probably go up a little bit higher to add in that helper, that apprentice, or even a second service tech. All right, so now you have your hourly rate. 
The next thing that you have to figure out to do is stock the vehicle. Your inventory in your truck is going to be the most important part of adding service to your Rolodex here. You want to overstock your trucks. You want to give the technician the ability of using the stock inventory in the truck in order to make a sale out in the field. If you understock your trucks, you're going to have a lot of time with the technician going back and forth to the supply house and spending a lot of time down the aisles of Home Depot going and searching for the items that they're looking for in order to fix that sign. But the key here is you want them working on the job site. So if you do need uh, a part at a local store, yes, you can have the technician go to the supply house and go and pick that up. However, you want to keep him working on the job site. So you might need a part runner. You might have to be that part runner yourself because you want to keep that technician working and making you money for your shop. So getting him that part to keep him working is going to be key. But keep in mind, you definitely want to have a stock of your inventory. So that's going to be like your ballasts, your transformers, your sockets, your lamps, your LED wire, your LEDs. Maybe you want to have a little bit of plexiglass in your acrylics for those broken caps. Maybe you want to have some cleaning solutions to clean awnings. You're going to have a lot of inventory items to add, but that's up to you to add uh, for your inventory sheets and for your technician to maintain that inventory. The third thing here that you really want to focus on is filling the schedule with service work. So what type of work are you actually going to be looking for? Well, sign cabinets are going to be a huge avenue here, you know, replacing bulbs, replacing ballast, replacing sockets. Those might be an area that you're definitely going to want to focus on fixing non-illuminated letters, whether they are neon. And even though that neon's kind of like a dying art these days, you might take that opportunity to convert them to an LED retrofit. And that opportunity is going to present itself many times when you're doing service. Another area that you could focus on is parking lot lighting. This is a big one. Maintaining parking lights is a safety feature. So landlords, property managers, account managers, they pay a hefty premium on replacing lights, parking lot lights to LED. So that might be something else that you want to stock up on on your truck. So filling the schedule is actually going to be one of the most difficult parts to install in your shop when you want to do service. Typically it involves a couple of moving parts and whether or not you want to get interested in participating in those parts is up to you. But what you're going to need here is you're going to need someone to do night watch. Now that's really where service starts because a lot of our projects that we're going to be servicing, a lot of the signs that we're going to be servicing are not lighting up. So you have to see those opportunities at night or when it gets dark out in your area. So finding some people to do night watch in certain areas is key number one. All right, so what goes into getting night watch? So the pay structure is the first thing. You're going to have to find some people that are interested in making a quick $30, $40 a night, getting you a minimum amount of leads uh, by taking pictures and documenting what's going on with that project. So you're going to need to find a place to centralize all of that data, right? Where are those leads going to come into? Whether they're going to email them to you, uh, a, a helpful tip here would be getting maybe even getting like a Google form to fill out and having all of those leads populate down into a spreadsheet of some sort. Uh, but you could also make like a form submission on your website, whatever the case may be. But you're going to get those leads and you want to have a minimum that you're going to need to pay out for that $30 or $40 a night. So maybe it's like 15, 20 leads. Another way that you can uh, pay for Nightwatch is actually paying per lead, maybe like a dollar or two dollars per lead so that there's a, there are no minimums, but they can do the work as much as they want and as little as they want. I typically like to go around the first side uh, on, on the former because, well, if you put a minimum and you can keep that cost to a minimum, meaning like you have a flat rate, $40, you might get 10 leads, you might get 30 leads, whatever the case is, and you're going to actually lower that lead acquisition cost uh, in most times on average. So after you have Nightwatch, the next and most important thing is your technician, your technician here is going to need to go to those appointments the very next day. Now I have had some experience with this and I've had some opportunities to do service a couple of different ways. You could do it one of two ways is usually the way I see it. Now your technician can just go there blindly and showing a picture of what their sign looks like and that they drove by last night and they saw what it looks like and you were here to help them fix it. Or you could actually have your office 
call and make an appointment and set that schedule for the technician because it depends on the technician and the type of person that you're gonna end up having hired because are they a good salesperson? If they aren't and they're just really good at their craft, then maybe you're just gonna try and book the appointments for them and have them do their skill and their craft in servicing and fixing that sign. But if they are a good salesperson, if they do have that gift of gab, that ability to conversate with people and tell them how it is, then you might not need the person to schedule the service calls, but you may wanna rely more heavily on the technician and also offer him some incentive. So if he sells the job, maybe there's a spiff or, or, or a commission of some sort that you can offer him so that you can both be profitable and share in the success of this new added revenue stream and service. In my opinion, I tend to think that the booking of appointments, the dispatch, if you will, is actually a much better and cleaner way to handle your service. So if you have somebody at the office, they can make a few extra calls. Uh, maybe there's an incentive for them if they book a call and, it, and you actually sell a job, maybe they can make a spiff and a commission there. There's a lot of ways that you can formulate this, but I tend to think that when you have a dispatcher who's gonna make sure that they fill a schedule for your service tech or your service techs, uh, it's gonna actually benefit everybody because it makes the conversation a little bit easier. It sets the precedent and plants the seed in the business owner already that they should expect the service tech to arrive. So let's talk about the service tech. The last piece to the puzzle, probably the most important piece because you really can't start doing service until you have the service technician on your roster. So the first and foremost is the technician needs to have some sort of background in troubleshooting when working with electronics. Something in the electrical field, possibly even sign manufacturing, where they know the ins and outs of how to get a sign to illuminate. Uh, they know how to work with high voltage neon, low voltage LED. But really someone that's key on diagnosing something fast because that's gonna be key here. They wanna be able to look at the project the first 15, 20 minutes and already understand what's wrong with the sign and how to get it working again. You also need someone organized. You need someone that's gonna be able to maintain the inventory on your truck, that's gonna be able to organize and take care of your service vehicle because that is an asset of your business. So you need someone with a clean driving record, someone that's gonna be organized and treated as if it was their own. The last thing that anybody wants is a sloppy vehicle showing up in front of your place of business and thinking that you're gonna charge premium rates when you're really running out of like, uh, you know, when you open up the doors, your materials are foreign falling out of the dorm, mean, you have empty boxes everywhere and rolled up tape and things like that. You certainly want to be clean, organized, neat, and you want to look the part. Speaking of looking the part, your technician should also be in uniform. I've had a lot of success with putting technicians in uniform, but ideally uh, what you want to do is you want to put them in uniform to deflate the defense systems of the customer. So when they go there and they're proposing, this is how much it's going to be to fix your sign, you don't want them looking sloppy. Yes, their truck is one thing, but their uniform is an entirely different visual for them that's gonna make them feel comfortable whether or not they wanna move forward or not. So get yourself a very nice technician uniform, maybe some dicky pants, some nice steel toe boots, uh, tucked in polo shirt, lanyard helmet, uh, possibly even a safety vest, maybe even a lanyard of some sort that kind of identifies who they are. Make them look official. Make them look like they are a real technician because that's really what they are. They shouldn't be showing up in just your, you know, a sloppy ripped t-shirt and, and jeans and, and raggedy Nikes. You know, we want them to look the part, be in uniform so that they represent your business as well as they should. Service is a time and materials type of atmosphere. So you're gonna have materials that you're gonna wanna mark up and you're gonna be charging for your time. No matter how much time you're there, it's how it's being built. So it's a very profitable business because you're not losing anything. So typically what we like to see here, when you have your materials, you take the cost of the material and really you should be at least doubling the cost of the material. You know, if you have a $50 power supply, you might wanna charge, you know, 100, maybe even $150 for that power supply. When you add that $150 to, for the power supply, and then you take in your, let's just say your hourly rate is $150 as well, that's $300 for an hour. That's great revenue that you're making, that you're bringing in while your other operations is running at your shop. You have your graphic designers, your, your CSRs, your business development people, and they're doing their normal routine of trying to sell and install signs. But you have this other added revenue stream that's just coming in, bringing in money and helping out your positive cash flow situation for your sign shop. So that's really everything about 
about service that I wanted to talk to you about in this video, but there is a helpful tip that I wanted to tell you. Yup, that's right. Shopbox can actually help you install service into your local market. And here's how. Shopbox is a wonderful software. I think we can all agree if you're watching this channel and you follow this channel, Shopbox is a wonderful software. I use it, you guys use it. It's a wonderful software to manage your shop. You can also use it one dimensionally for service. So if you put your technician in a situation where they're using a LTE tablet of some sort, let's say an iPad, you can actually use your web browser with Shopbox mobily out in the field. Now, if you program a product, one product, maybe two, maybe three, whatever. Maybe you have a product for parking lot light service. Maybe you have a product for maintenance and cleaning. Maybe you have a product designed for uh, maintenance contracts, but you'll have one key product here and you'll just label it service. And inside that product service is gonna be everything that they could possibly sell plus their hourly rate into that product. So you can actually program your product and have a digital menu screen by allowing the technician to get signatures, you can allow the technician to email the, the estimate, you can allow the technician to actually get payment right then and there through Shopbox out in the field with your service technician and the customer in real time. So that might be something that you might wanna install and actually program when you're also gonna get service installed in your local market. All right, that's it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I love talking about service. So if you have any questions whatsoever, leave a comment below. I will get back to you about it. I'm curious to see how many of you are currently doing service. And if you're not doing service, well, maybe this video will help you get that underway because it's an extremely profitable revenue stream for you. You wanna get that bucket truck first. You wanna make sure that you outfit it. You wanna make sure that you stock it. And you wanna make sure that you have the driver, the technician, at the best operating hour that they possibly can, making you as much money per hour as they possibly can. I'm Peter Karunas with Shopbox. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.